as long as the government has the Federal Reserve, they can go on their merry way. They can do anything they want. There won't be any cutback in deficit spending. All the government has to do is request that the Federal Reserve purchase their debt. And the Fed says, sure. And the debt goes bad, well, the American tax taxpayer pays for it. And when the Fed does that, they create money out of thin air. It's called monetization, and it's inflationary. And that's how government pays for deficits and mandated services. They don't, they're not extracting enough taxes, or they call it revenue from the public, so they just keep on creating debt and the Fed keeps on buying it. I mean, people say, well, I paid into Social Security and Medicare. Yeah, but what they forgot to tell you is they took all the money and they spent it. So there is no money there. There's a liability, but there's no way to pay for it <coughs> unless the workers of the future are willing to pay for the workers of the past who get these benefits, who in fact had them stolen from them by the politicians in their government and the people in banking on Wall Street. And so we go on our merry way this year coming, and that'll be from probably last June to next June. The Fed and Congress will probably create stimulus of $2.5 trillion again. And the following year they'll probably do it again. And inflation is going to go rampant. In fact, we might even get to a point where we experience what happened in the Weimar Republic or what we saw most recently, which is ongoing, in Zimbabwe. And um, inflation is climbing. The people know it. The purchasing power of income is falling. Income itself is falling. And so each day, things, generally speaking, cost more. And that, of course, is not what government says, but that's the reality of what is really happening. And so you're going to continue to see this play, and at the same time, as a reaction to that, policy of creating money and credit and paying to roll over debt and allowing foreign countries to continue to deliberately lower the level of their currencies. It all has to. It has to end in tariffs and goods and services. There's no other way it can, and it just can't end up any other way. In the past, we've had recessions, and they've been able to spend their way out of them, but they've never had the debt that they've got today, and they can't spend their way out of it. They're delaying it, and that's okay. Then people don't have to face the music. The problem is, on the other end, when you have deflationary def deflation, what's going to happen is, the problem is going to be ten times worse than it was otherwise. So, getting back to inflation. Real inflation since 1980. Gold would sell at $7,700 an ounce. And if over the next two years we have the same kind of inflation, maybe even hyperinflation, could gold go to ten or $20,000 an ounce? The answer is yes. The value of everything that you see today will go down somewhere between 60 and 95 percent. And you'll be able to go on an auction and buy a home today that was selling for 300,000, is now selling for 150, and at that auction, 
you may be able to buy it for $20,000. Now, you may think that's off the wall. Go back and look at the numbers during the 1930s when that very thing happened. Plant and equipment. Everything that's physical will fall in value. When you used to get your hair cut for, I don't know what they charge, let's say $15. Well, that'll get down probably to a dollar. I mean, you have no idea what's going to happen. It's going to be the 1930s, 40s, and 50s all over again. And we're in the 40s and 50s now in parallel. The bad stuff really hasn't happened yet. I had a letter today, and the person said, well, my house is worth uh, a million, and now it's worth 750 And I said, keep on holding on to it. And maybe it'll be worth 300000 Maybe it'll be worth nothing. Keep it up. You have to be willing to accept the fact that your house may be worth very little compared to what it was before. I mean, I've seen some writers who don't go off the edge saying real estate could drop a whole total of 80 to 90 percent. And that's true, it could. I don't know whether it'll get that bad, but it's not going to be good. And it's certainly going to be very high. What's high? Anywhere from 40 to 70 percent, depending upon where you live and how much that went up. Commercial real estate's a disaster. And it's going to get worse. So your only place that you can go that you understand is gold and silver coins and shares. And for those who are sophisticated enough, they can go into commodities. But I don't recommend it. Because 95% of the people who go into commodities and the foreign exchange market lose money. So don't even attempt it.